This is a big year for Jimbo Fisher and company in College Station. We all know that the pressure is on and that the Aggies need to have a good season. I got a lot of optimism for the Aggies heading into this year. I think there's a lot to be excited about, and I think the schedule sets up really nice. Today here on Southeastern 14, we are going to break down three critical moments that will define the Texas A&M season in 2023, and I think they could define it in a nice way for those in Aggieland. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Blaine Gilmer. Welcome to Southeastern 14. I cover football here for Southeastern 14 as we try to do so in a way that is different than anyone else, constantly putting out videos and doing coverage of the Southeastern Conference, not only in football, but in baseball and basketball as well. Chris Lee, Blake Level, they do a great job with those sports you can follow. They run to Omaha. Over on the baseball side, Chris Lee will have you covered from start to finish as the tournament gets going here on that. But it is time to talk about three critical moments for Texas A&M in the 2023 season. I think the most obvious one is week two at Miami. This is a game that if Texas A&M, and let's be honest, you look at these two rosters, you look at the, the direction of these two programs, even in a year last year where Texas A&M couldn't pee a drop offensively, okay, there were, there were offensive problems. You have to feel like they are a team that is made even to go on the road in what is not a great environment over there in Miami. The, the stadium is far away from the campus. The, the students don't travel well out there. It is just more of a corporate-type environment over there at Hard Rock Stadium. I feel like Texas A&M fans will take that opportunity, you know, in September, maybe travel out to, to uh, Miami Gardens out there, uh, get, a little, get a little South Florida time. I think Texas A&M fans will travel well. What you have to look at early there is Bobby Petrino, Connor Wigman, Early on in that game, first real test, uh, getting this this offense operating in a road environment, okay, which, I, like I said, I don't think it's going to be tremendously hostile, but nevertheless, it is a road environment. Can they capitalize early? Can they execute early? Can Bobby Petrino manufacture some easy completions early on to get Connor Wigman's confidence rolling? Because if he can... I think that Moose Mohammed, Evan Stewart, Anaya Smith can have a big day against that Miami defense. One that that is Mario Cristobal and company have problems over there. And as as rough as things have been in terms of A uh, and M and and you know underperforming and things like that under Jimbo Fisher, I think it's been even worse uh, with Mario Cristobal. You look at that Middle Tennessee game last year; that was a just travesty for Miami football. I think that as bad as Miami needs that game, I think Texas A&M actually needs it worse because of where they are in terms of the tenure of Jimbo Fisher, how long he's been there, and what it could mean if they were to drop that kind of game. I don't see it happening. I think Texas A&M goes on the road and early, comes out of the gate early, looking good offensively. So I think that is a key moment they're a critical moment for Texas A&M in week two. A fast start against Miami is a must over there. Um, then you're looking at you look at these first five games. It's New Mexico, Miami. Miami's the one on the road. ULM, Auburn, both at Kyle Field, and then Arkansas in Jerry's World before you get Alabama at home. That Arkansas game is going to be critical. It's always a a terrific kind of bounce of ball type game something crazy seems to happen that goes makes that thing swing one way or the other I think that's a critical game because I think legitimately Texas A&M has a chance to be 5-0 and going into the Alabama game and that requires them to win that game against an experienced Arkansas team um, but in terms of you know experience Texas A&M is going to bring a lot of back on the perimeter especially with Anaya Smith and all he can do. Um, like I said, Moose Muhammad, Evan Stewart that I mentioned earlier, 
but they're bringing up experience up front as well. Uh, and I think really that's going to help those young running backs. You're looking for Amari Daniels and Le'Veon Moss and Ruben Owens to be the guy that, okay, who steps up to be that kind of feature back, that guy that's going to take hold of the the running game for Texas a m It's fine if it's a running back by committee, but you've got to be able to uh, help, you know, Connor Wigman be able to stay ahead of the chains and not constantly having to be dropped back and throwing all the time, help that offensive line out a little bit. And I think they'll be able to run the football uh, better than people expect this year. But that Arkansas game, that's always a physical game. So my, my question on that is, can that offensive line and can the running backs there be able to establish the run well enough and listen, Arkansas is a team that was terrible against the pass last year, did a decent job against the run. I think that under Travis Williams, that Arkansas defense is going to be more aggressive. I think they're going to really uh, bring bring a lot of different stunts and blitzes early on, trying specifically some run blitzes, try to thwart Texas A&M from make them one-dimensional and try to make them, hey, you're not going to run the football on us. You're going to have to beat us over the top, which teams did last year, but I think that Arkansas feels like they're better in coverage. I think you're going to get some some one-on-one matchups for uh, Moose Muhammad, for Evan Stewart. Can Connor Wigman in that game, uh, you know, probably second half, this is going to be a tight one, and it's going into the second half. How does, again, a new offense there, and that Auburn game should give you a lot of tests, but a, a still newer, cohesive unit, uh, First, does, does Jimbo Fisher totally trust Bobby Petrino to call the plays, to be the guy when it comes down crunch time and, and what could be a close game late uh, to, to make all the calls, things like that? I think that's going to be a very interesting dynamic because Alabama comes calling the next week, comes to Kyle Field. We know what happened the last time Alabama came to Kyle Field. Texas A&M sitting at 5-0 and because they've taken care of business against Miami and Arkansas. And they get Kyle, they get Kyle Field rocking with Alabama coming in. That's a huge, huge game, huge game, and a big opportunity for Texas A and M. So I think the first two critical moments, as I said, at Miami early versus Arkansas late. Well, how, how do they respond? And what's going to be a tight game, a physical game in the late third into the fourth quarter, and then. If you're wanting a, a, a game that I think is really going to uh, tell you the tale, I think you got to look at November 4th against Ole Miss. It is a it is a team that, you know, Ole Miss started off hot last year. They didn't end the season that way. This is just going to be a matter of, of pride because Lane Kiffin and company are going to come in at a home game with Quinshawn Judkins And they're going to say, hey, we ran the ball for almost 400 yards, 390 yards rushing against Texas A&M last year. We're going to run it right down their throat this year. So this is going to be a physical, a mentality test for that defensive front of Texas A&M. You've got Shamar Turner, McKinsey Jackson, Walter Nolan, all these guys, Shamar Stewart, that Lane Kiffin and company are going to say, okay, man card check. We're going to we're going to run right at you. We're going to see if you can come to Vault Hemingway Stadium and you can physically impose your will to stop Quinshaw Junkins from running the football. Because I'm not sure if it's going to be Jackson Dart over there. I'm not sure if it's going to be Spencer Saunders at, at quarterback. Who knows how that's going to end up. But I do know they're going to give Quinshaw Judkins the football and they're going to say, okay, can you stop us, especially after that performance last year? I think you're going to see a better, even more experienced defensive front. We know the talent is there. LT Overton, Shamar Stewart, guys who were freshmen last year just kind of getting getting things going. Walter Nolan was a freshman last year. So now all these guys have been another year in the strength program, another year in the nutrition program. They're going to be in there another year in the scheme of Texas A&M's Defense. So I think you're going to see guys like them, Edrin, Edrin Cooper uh, at linebacker, of course, Fadil Diggs and Chris Russell Jr. also there in the linebacker core. So that front, at front six, front seven 
there is going to be tested. Now, Ole Miss is still going to spread you out, and they've got weapons on the edge, but make no mistake about it. They want to run the football right at you, a physical, physical contest. I think on the road, Vault Hemingway Stadium, that's the third moment because I think legitimately you talk about when if you win that game as Texas A&M, you're talking about a couple of games at Neyland Stadium and at LSU that are the separators from – going from, okay, a really good year under Jimbo Fisher to a potentially elite, extremely exciting year for Texas A&M. It could, it could, that could separate you from going from, okay, this was, this was a step in the right direction to, man, Texas A&M is, is finally turned it around. They're doing special things under Jimbo Fisher. If, and I think Bobby Petrino is going to make a big difference on this offense there's a couple of games there, the physicality, the defense. Uh, they showed themselves, you know, against LSU last year, stood up and were able to control that game with some physicality over there. I think if they do the same against Ole Miss and against Arkansas, one in a neutral environment and, of course, one on the road against Ole Miss in November 4th, Balt Hemingway, you're looking at a, at a year that could be really special for the Aggies. Tell us what you think about these moments coming up for Texas A&M. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications. We will catch you guys next time right here on Southeastern 14.